Thank you for coming. This is really probably the largest number of um, people I've seen in this CMS training in a long time, if ever. Uh, and uh, welcome to the, I think, first Fortran training course um, that I've given. So um, it's always been a little bit hard. So you've, you've probably seen that we've um, put a lot of Python training courses out there. Um, but we've been, I've been very reluctant to give Fortran training courses, mainly because um, of a very specific difficulty. Um, when we teach you Python, we simply teach you how to write code. And if there are several ways to do that, then we will tell you just one way, and that's the way you can write code. But the way most of you will interact with Fortran is different. You will usually interact with Fortran programs that have been written by someone else. And then you will have to understand what this code is about. And so you kind of have to get a feel for what, how Fortran works. Um, the thing is, Fortran is also pretty old. So it's been around for over 60 years and has been changed and upgraded several times. Um, with probably the most important, well, probably, was definitely the most important change uh, from version Fortran 77 to Fortran 90, um, when they changed uh, from fixed form source to free form source. Um, fixed form meaning that the first characters in the line have a special meaning. So um, whereas free form source is more or less what you, what you, uh, what you know. So each line is independent and you, you can write anything on any line. Uh, anywhere in the line. Um, if you encounter Fortran files with the extension .f or .for, uh, those will likely be fixed form and very old. Um, I will only talk about Fortran 90 and lighter, um, and those should have the extension .f90. I have seen some people use uh, extension to denote even later standards of Fortran like F08 for Fortran 2008. Um, I don't recommend to do that. Um, just use F90 for free form and dot .f for fixed form. Um, the big difference between Fortran and Python is that Fortran is um, a purely compiled language. Um, that means you cannot execute code directly. Uh, you have to use a compiler to turn your source code into machine code. This also means that you cannot easily run parts of the program the way you do with Python. Advantage of that is that it's considerably faster to execute. For, so Fortran is really good for number crunching. Um, Fortran is also a strongly typed language. And that means that every variable has to be declared and can only hold a specific type of data. Types of data like integer, float, etc. So let me now share my screen. Uh, desktop two. And let's write some code. Let me quickly move this out of the way. <clears throat> so let's just start with a simple hello world program to see what parts uh, what, what parts of a program uh, make up a Fortran program. So you have the statement program and then you give it a name. Um, then at the next step, you, you um, can load uh, external libraries. So for example, I'm using uh, ISO Fortran Env, uh, which is a very modern version. So 2000, I think it arrived in 2008, uh, but it's quite useful. It's, it, that, this is similar to the, to, the, uh, to the import statements of Python. Then, you will then comes the statement implicit none. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, because of backwards compatibility, the default for Fortran programs still is Im uses implicit typing. Um, and I don't want you to use that. And I so don't want you to use implicit typing that I'm not even going to tell you what implicit typing is. Just always use, uh, just always type this implicit none in your programs and modules. Um, <clears throat> after that implicit none comes 
the the section where you declare all your variables. Everything that every variable yet that you need, you need to um, you need to define here. In this case, I'm just going to declare um, a character uh, a character statement. Waiting. And after you've declared all your um, all your variables, then um, then comes the actual code section. So uh, actually, the instructions that make up the code. So I can I can assign something to the variable. And I can make a, in this case, I make a print statement. And then when you're finished, we say end program, hello world. Um, I always recommend to use, to write all of this down. It makes it, the code much more easy, easy to read. Technically, just writing end would be sufficient but it makes your program much easier to read and it makes um, debugging easier. Uh, so the, the, if, if you end the wrong thing, um, then uh, the compiler will notice that if you say, well, this is, I'm, I'm ending the program. Um, now that we've written that, uh, we can go to the, to the compiler, to the um, terminal. And we need to load, we need, on, on Gadi, we need to load the compiler module. I'm using the Intel compiler that is available on Gadi and is very good. Um, but um, there is also, if you, if you want, just want to do it on your own computer, there's G-Fortran, um, which is part of the uh, GCC GNU compiler collection, I think it stands for. Um, that is for, that is free and that is, you can just uh, easily install it, G-Fortran. So, but I'm using Intel Fortran compiler. And I'm just saying in I fort uh, and then the, the the source code, and it will create a file. So it has created this file a dot out. This is in Linux system the default um, file name for compiled versions. Now, we don't really want that. Uh, want it called like that. So let's say I'm telling it to write it with minus o. I tell it should write it in a program called hello. And then when I execute it, it executes. And it writes hello world to the screen. So let's have a look again. Um, you have- Holger, sorry, why did you get rid of the A dot out? I missed that, why you got rid of it? Uh, the thing is, um, if I don't, before, so there is no A dot out, um, not before. So when I just compile it and I don't, don't give the compiler the name for the out for the, the file name for the executable. It will simply call it a dot out. Oh, okay, thanks. And I just it it if I if I just do this, um, then I can just do that, and it will also run it. But okay, thank you. Um, usually, usually the le the least you want to do is give it an output name and um, the file name that you want to compile. So let me quickly look at my notes. So um, I said that Fortran is a strongly typed um, language. So you have to tell, um, you have to tell uh, the, in the source code all the, all the variables that you use. There are a few basic variable types. They're going from um, in, in ranks of complexity, logical. Logical uh, is a Boolean. Other, other languages call this Boolean, so that's, that is simply true or false. Um, then there is uh, integer, which is an integer. Um, then there is real, which in other languages is called um, float. Um, there's also double precision, which is 
uh, which is actually two words. It's that this is just the way it is. Very few people use it because it is, um, you can do the same thing with real, um, with the kind that I'm coming to in a moment. Um, then there is complex. So if you have complex numbers, like uh, with a real and imaginary part, and then you have the, the character that I've used up here. So character without, without this length statement would be sim simply a single character. Um, if you want to have, if you ha want to have more than a single character, then you need to use, then you need to add this len equals five. Hi, Holger. Why you use length is equal to five? Why like any specific reason? What if you don't use that? So the thing is, Fortran um, has a really hard time with variable length strings. So all the all the um, that's why I'm, I'm actually a little bit um, hesitant to call them strings. Um, Fortran actually only uses in its basic form um, fixed length strings. So if you don't use if you don't use this uh, len character. Yeah. Then um, I can just show show you what happens. And um, by the way, comments start with a with a cap with an exclamation mark. So I'm just commenting this out. Um, I'll show you what happens when I try to compile this. Uh, so you see that only the first character was was saved. What, what was written in this? So because without this length, without this len uh, option, um, it will only it will only be a single character. You can only put a single character in there. Um, this is the fact that you basically need at the comp at at compile time. So when you write the code, you need to know the length of these strings. Can be a little bit annoying. Um, usually, what I do is I make them long enough that everything uh, will work. And there is, so if I, if, if I were to make it very large, I'll show you what happens. So you see that it has actually made um, 50 characters long, then the single space and then the world. Um, but you can get around this with the, with the keyword trim. And trim removes so, so the way that this is saved, it's actually uh, padded with spaces and trim, the, the, the command trim removes um, trailing spaces, all the trailing spaces. So if you do it like that, um, you, should, you should be back to where we were. So now it's, it's back to, to where we are. But, um, it is it is a very serious limitation of Fortran that um, you will grind up against several uh, easily uh, heavily. Um, okay. Yes. And, so can I add something? Is that uh, because of this limitation, it happens quite often that. If you have a long path for your files, you will end up be finding like file not found errors or whatever. It's because your path was too long for the variable that was saving it in your uh, code. And so that's why sometimes it's better to do a uh, symbolic leaks that will uh, shorten your path. Yes. So this is the, the fact that, um, that it should simply um, drops Tray, uh, drops the characters after the after the memory, so after its its uh, length, um, can lead to can lead to issues. So this is this is a very serious limitation, um, or annoying limitation, and you have to to know about that. Um, here you can see that I've used these double colons. This basically this uh, um, makes the difference between the changes the, or, or den denotes the, um, the end of the, uh, of the declaration and the variable names. Um, you can omit that, but I find it much, it's, it's mostly you want to use that because it's, so, because it makes it easier to read.
Um, it also, uh, you can also make arrays of, of, of variables. Um, so if you have, uh, if you want to have like um, multiple values together, like for example, a, a, an axis or something like that, um, you can, there are two ways to do that. So after I'm, I'm, you, you tell it what type of variable should be in this array, you can then either say dimension, and then you can say, for example, 10, and you give it, you give it um, a variable name. Um, but what's more, what's more common is to do it like that because it's shorter. And it's also easily to under, easy understand, easily to understand. So this is this means um, it's um, an array of integers uh, with length ten. Um, again, a difference between Fortran and most other languages um, is that Fortran start by default. Fortran starts counting at one. So the first the first element of this array would be uh, would would be a one. Um, you can change it. You can say I want this to start at zero, or you can even say uh, start at minus ten to ten. So that would be would be written like that. But um, by default, oops, by default um, these values start at one. You can also have multidimensional arrays. So you can also say, for example, um, uh, uh, like this. So these would be um, would be a two-dimensional array with two elements in one direction and twenty elements in the other. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let me quickly go look at my notes. I want to talk about allocatable arrays. Yes. So, um, while we're talking about arrays, there is also, um, because in this case, you always have to give the, the shape of the array um, at compile time, which is a little bit uh, which which might not be what you what you need to do. So sometimes when you compile when when you write the program, you don't know how large this array needs to be. So what you can do then is you can make a so-called allocatable array, in which case <coughs> you add the keyword allocatable to the variable declaration, and then change the um, the the size simply by to a colon. Now, what you cannot do, you have to tell it how many, how many dimensions it should have, or what the rank is. So this would be a, a rank two array because it has two dimensions. Um, you can also do a rank one array and so on. And then before you use it, at some point in the program, you would then um, run the program, uh, the the statement allocate. Like that, or you can you can use a variable for that. Sorry, could you also um, just allocate a lot and then trim away, like you did with the characters? Um, no, you can't. So the the trim is only for the output. So the greeting yeah. afterwards still contains fifty characters and, and all these trailing spaces, the variable. Yeah. Um, the trim simply saying changes the output. Um, yeah. You cannot. Yeah, continue. What you can do is you can do something like um, only the first four elements. So only the elements one through four. Hmm. By the way, that's this is inclusive. So it would if I, if I were to. Um, let's say. So 
if I compile this, let's have a quick look. So you can see that it's it's now has set the first four values um, to one, and then all others are still zero, which is the default. So it, it's a little bit compiler dependent on what happens to to variables when they're initialized, what kind of value they contain. Um, so you you have to be a little bit careful. This could be it could be um, initialized to zero, or it could be simply whatever was in the memory before. Um, before you said before it was so it'd be be very wary to access um, data that you haven't explicitly said before. Um, there are ways to tell it what to what to write in these in the allocate statement, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, arrays allocatable arrays. Um. Are there any other questions so far? I think this is a good point to have some to have some questions. I have one question. So here you allocate the variable a with some dimension, and then you just store one from one to four and rest up to zero. So I'm saying, what if you just defined integer and double colon a, a ten or a five? What the value? will be inside A rather than using the allocate table like so if I if I yeah. if I were to just do this? Yes, yes. That just use the A10. Just give the A10 or A5 something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um that will probably so if I have to take this out, it will probably also be zero. Um but um Yeah, oh, but um, in this case, be be a little bit careful about this, um, because um, yeah, you you, it's always dangerous to access variables before you before you write something to it. Um, in fact, let's have a quick look. I'm not sure. No, it doesn't warn me. Okay. Um, so you yeah you you can set set it like that or you can even say um can set it like that um there's also uh, a data statement where you can immediately um, write data to, to these during initialization. But generally, um, I think this is going to go into too, too much uh, trouble. Well, we're talking, but, but there is one thing that you probably should also be aware because it is all again a difference between Fortran and, for example, C or Python. Um, if you have a multi-dimensional array um, like like this, then in memory, um, what you would have is um, at first. So I mean, memory is one-dimensional. The, me the the computer only has a single uh, a sing uh, on only knows a single address for each memory block, and it is. It is simply one-dimensional. So somehow the, the, the program has to write this multi-dimensional array into, into, the, into, into memory. And um, for Fortran, this looks like that. A11, then comes A21, uh, then so on till A, A101, and then comes A21, uh, one, two. To and so on, and that is exactly opposite of, of for example, C or default Python, um, where it would where this the the rear one would the, the second index would start um, be faster and uh, would would change quicker. 
and that is uh, important for um, for optimization. So that this is something you should that we we will come back to in a moment. Later, or we'll come back to later. So um, I've I have created a little bit of a program here to um, to look at different parts because. With Fortran, you usually, as I said before, you usually encounter these Fortran programs by others. And so I, I'm trying to, uh, I'll go through this and have a little bit of a look what's happened, what's what's uh, happening here. Um, so this is, this is a program that I've written for trying out stuff long time ago and um, that I've a little bit modified for this exercise. So again, you see um, the program, and at the end, you have this end program prime. Um, then I, I'm using two, um, two modules. I use the, the isofortran env, which, which I've used it before. I, I specifically tell the compiler that it's an intrinsic module so that the, the compiler itself knows this module. Um, but it, it wasn't really important. And in this case, I'm just, I'm say I, from this library, I only want what this library knows as in 64. And I come back to that in a moment. I also use um, the library mod prime, which is um, another library that I've written that I will come to in a bit. Um, implicit none. Uh, and then here I, you can see how I use this in 64. You can use this kind equals in 64 to tell the compiler which kind of integer is this. So in 64 is, is a, basically means a 64 bit integer, which means that um, 63 in, in uh, bits are used to display the number, to, to store the number. And the first bit is of course for the sign. Um, uh, this is how I would recommend you use um, if, if you want to declare what type of, of, of integer you want. Um, unfortunately, what you will find a lot is in, in other codes, integer uh, kind equals uh, eight, for example. Um, now, in 64 is an integer variable itself. So it is. it contains an inter, integer value and I think it's eight, um, but this is not guaranteed. So um, this is using something like that is syntactically correct, but it might produce different results compile, if you compile it with different compiler, uh, if you use a different compiler to compile it. Um, some people also use, you will fi sometimes find this and this is, don't use this. This has never been standard. Um, unfortunately, you will see this done quite a lot, but don't ever, um, and, and it is kind of like the same as this kind, but um, don't use this. If you want to use this type of, of, um, of, of uh, syntax. Now, if you use a modern compiler, you can, you can get this in 64 out of isofortran env. Um, if you don't have this compiler, um, if, you, if, you, if you need an older version that isn't uh, Fortran 2008 compliant, um, you can use uh, the, an intrinsic function called um, selected int kind. And here you basically say how many digits you want to store. So if you say something, I want to be able to store at least eight digit integers, then, um, then you can use this and you would, uh, you would probably do something like this, uh, integer parameter, uh, 64 I don't know, 10 digits, whatever. So this, this is a compiler 
function. Um, so this is, this is evaluated by the compiler at compile time to say, I want the smallest kind of integer that allows me to store, to get, to store uh, integer numbers with 10 digits. And that is, uh, and then you can use this like that. Um, there is also, there, there are also uh, a real 64, real 32. Um, it a little, depends a little bit on the compiler which is available and what your processor can handle. Um, is that, uh, okay. Anyway, so I have here now my, um, my uh, variables. The parameter means this is actually a constant. Um, I never want to change this value. This should be always fixed. So like, whatever, I don't know how. So you could use something like that to say, this should always be this, Yes, it's 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 an integer variable or it's a it's a real variable, but this should never change. So this makes it easier to debug um, uh, or it, uh, to 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 understand the code. Um, so I'm using here a file unit that I'm coming to in a moment. Uh, integer and iOS and IOM is also like that. And then we have here uh, an allocatable array of primes. Um, here we have a preprocessor state uh, directives that I come to in a moment. Um, we have here a print and read statements. So it's it's going to write write this code uh, write this to the to the screen, and then what you enter it will store in these variables uh, start and n. Then um, allocate, once I have n, I'm allocating the array that was allocatable. I set some, in, some variable. And in this case, I want to write, so the, 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 the whole program, the idea is to start with a number that you give and then search for, for primes larger than this number. Um, so you can see, um, Yeah, you can you can uh, basically what it writes up here. So, um, so for example, if I were to give a start number of four and um, an n of three, then it would look okay. Five is a prime, six, seven is a prime, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it would then write um, five, seven, and eleven to the file data dot that. Um, it, here it opens the file, and here it calls a subroutine. Let's go to subroutine. So to this subroutine, um, this is um, there are three ways to to include a subroutine to to uh, link to a subroutine. Um, this is one that's quite easy to do here. At the end of your program, but before the actual end program line, you write this contains keyword, and then in here you can you can create subroutines, uh, subroutines and uh, or procedures, subroutines and functions. Um, we'll call to we'll come to a function in a moment. Um, so here I give it a name. So this is the same name as here before, and I have um, a dummy attribute. Um, that I then have to give here. So similar to in Python, you all, you know the same thing. Um, you, you tell it, uh, if I call it like that, then it should be operated as if I, as if here OP had the, had, was a string variable, uh, right. Of course, because strongly typed, I have to use, I have to declare it, um, what kind of variable it is. And in this case, I can use this len equals star uh, attributes because um, 
This way I can basically just get whatever is uh, passed into. I can, I can deduce the length um, of the string variable uh, from whatever is given. So um, that makes it a little bit easier. Intent in means um, I only care about the value that this variable has when this subroutine is called. Um, I, uh, the subroutine will not itself change it. Um, that allows me to simply write what is in effect a constant in here. There's also, um, you can also set, tell out, which means that this variable will be um, written by me. So this subroutine will change, will, will set this value. And there's also in out, <coughs> um, which means that I'm the, the subroutine is both reading the value, but also potentially updating it. In this case, I only want uh, in. You don't need to you don't need to write this intent at all, but again, it helps the compiler spot certain difficult uh, to certain syntax errors or, or certain coding errors. And um, the earlier you see a coding error, the easier it is to fix it. As Sorry, this... Olger, just a question. So for example, in my subroutine check, I made a mistake and mistakenly I changed the value of OP. The, in this case, the, the compiler would tell me that there is an error because I put that intent in. Yes, I can, I can show you. So um, if I were to say, uh, if I were to say, for example, OP equals um, empty space. Mm -hmm. uh, let me save this. Make it here. Uh, so here it says a dummy argument with the intent in attribute shall not be defined nor become undefined. So it, it immediately mm -hmm. tells me in line sixty of this file there is a uh, there is an error. Now if I had, for example, if I hadn't put this in, I'm not sure whether it's smart enough to notice that. So now it has compiled it because it doesn't know the intent. Um, so it, I, it compiled it, but now if I, if I run it, I now it now crashes. Why does it crash? Because it's been given, it's been, it's been given um, a, a constant string that cannot be overwritten. And here it tries to overwrite it. So if I were to say intent in out, which would be the correct uh, intent for something that both reads and overrides this, if I that now make this, it will tell me again an error. Why? Because it, ha it can now see, hey, you're calling this an actual argument is an, is an expression or constant. This is not valid since the associate direct has explicit intent in or in out, uh, out or in out. So this is one of the things where I say, um, declaring the intent of the dummy variables or the, the dummy arguments is helping you find these bugs much, much easier um, than uh, not doing this. And I strongly urge you to always use this kind of, uh, to always use the intent in these, in these uh, procedures in, in subroutines and functions um, so that uh, it will help you greatly um, debug your code and, and spot these, these kinds of mistakes. All right, thank you. So it opens the file. Then here we have a loop. So I'm just starting with um, So, the, so this is this is what what in Python would be a for loop, um, of or, or C everywhere else every every other program calls this a for loop. In Fortran, it's called do. That's just because Fortran is old, and back when it was developed, it, they decided to call it do. Um, it uses do and and do. 
Um, and here you can see that technically, again, you could use it like that, I think. But um, I strongly advise against it because um, always tell it, tell um, what kind of end it is for. It just makes it easier for the for the compiler to see to spot these mistakes that uh, that everyone is making that everyone makes. So um, other than in 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 Python, um, you give it basically uh, you use a, a generator or a um, or a, a, a list to iterate over every single element. Um, this is more this is more a com uh, for, Fortran, this kind of Fortran statement is more rigid. So you have to give it um, a variable that should that should be your iterator. And then you give it a start value and an end value. And if you want to, you can also give it um, a step value. So um, in this case, I've just selected to uh, start an end value. Um, and it will, it has to be an integer variable. Um, in older versions of Fortran, you could also use uh, reals, but that's a really bad idea. So um, that has been discontinued. Um, then we have in here uh, an if statement. So this is again the same thing um, that you do, that you would use from from Python. You check whether something is uh, is true or false. And you can see p is a logical statement. So p itself is either true or false. Then, and only if that's true, this part of the, this part is executed. In here, I have another, uh, another uh, if block. So if um, n is equals uh, smaller than one, then exit. So basically because I only, for example, if I if I took four three, um, I'm only interested in finding three um, three variables. Uh, sorry, not three variables, three uh, primes. So on so every time I find a prime, I reduce the number, and then once I've I've found the all the numbers that I'm interested in, I just exit and exit without anything. Um, always exits the uh, the innermost do loop, but of course since we only have one do loop, um, that will it will then just jump out. Then here it has a write statement um, that uh, writes these files to a these these files to a um, that writes these files to a file. So okay. Let's save it. Let's save. Um, okay, something's weird there. I have a bug somewhere. Oh, do I want to debug it? No, I'm not going to debug it now. Um, I'm just going into more detail about the different things that we have here. Let's go back up here and look at this open statement. So when you open a file for either for writing or reading in Fortran, um, you have the first thing that you have to decide whether what kind of format, whether it should be formatted. By default, it's formatted. Um, you, can, you can add this like, oh, by the way, this is a line continuation character. This means that whatever is in the next line should simply be interpreted as being part of this line. You could also do it like that. 
if you want to if, if you want to have it uh if you want to have a comment for example in between but that's not something i do so um formatted means it's a text file that you can read so um as i said before i have so this is that's what it's what it has written um oh yeah of course uh, I know what the what the error was. Um, so uh, this is um, it has written these files and you can read it. It's five seven zero. Um, if you if you were to um, to write it unformatted. about the huge at the moment um, so if I run it now I can't use it. Can't use a format here. Maybe a binary file, so it will now say maybe a binary file. So you cannot, you cannot read this. Um, but it it stores the data uh, in binary format. Um, normally, you would want to. Usually, want usually you want to have it formatted. Um, <coughs> If you open the file, you need this file unit, which is just an integer. You can see up here, I used 101. Um, you can use any integer. Um, I strongly advise uh, to use one that's larger than 10 because file units between zero and 10 might be used for, uh, or are often used for things like standard input, standard output streams. Um, so you don't want to, to, to mess with those. Um, I just used 101 in this case. Um, I don't want to have simply 101 everywhere in my, so if I want to change it, because I might want to change it <coughs> later, I have created this, this uh, constant integer, file unit 101, so I could just um, change this again, and then um, it would automatically be changed everywhere. So I'm using it here, I'm using this here in the file, uh, uh, in, the, in the write statement, and I'm using it here in the close statement. Um, the open then I'm using the I give it the the, the file name, so data dot dot. Um, I tell it action write. So this is should I read or write to this? Um, status new. I say this should be a new file created, and I'm coming to that in a moment. Um, and then I have here these error codes. I O stat. Is simply an int uh, is, is an input uh, intent out um, integer variable, and that tells me whether some whether the the the, the open was successful. If it's successful, IOS will be zero. Um, and IOMSG is a is um, a character variable, so you can see that I'm also intent out. So you can see that here it's a it's a I give it a two hundred character message. And if an error occurred, then this will be set to a specific um, string that is a human understandable um, explanation of the error. And then um, 
we're coming back to this call check open. If you look down here, because this subroutine is contained in the main program, it's in this contained section, it has access to all the variables from the scope of the main program. So I can use here this IOM to basically write out this message. So if I were to um, let's run it. So now it has created this data.dat file. If I now run this program again, it now says encountered error during open, during open, encountered error during open. And it then prints this message, I, IO message, IOM to the screen. So here it prints this message and the message is cannot overwrite existing file unit 10, 10 which, uh, and, and the file name. So if I were to change the status from new to unknown, by the way, make this, make simply is a, is a simple program that, uh, that runs these program, this, these things, so that I don't have to type it out anymore. So it tells me exactly what I'm, what I'm writing. Um, now, Uh, now it has overwritten the. Now it has overwritten this file. Uh, are there any questions so far? And no one. I had a question. Yes. Hi, uh, it's just about the file unit for when you're opening files. This file unit needs to be different for every different file you are referring to. Yes, it's yes. a handle, right? Okay, that's that's that, it's it's a handle. It's a it's a um, actually what you can do if you want to. Or, or the the more modern versions of what I usually do um, is I don't actually make this a parameter. I'm not giving it a value, and I say here new unit. And that, this turns this into an, from an intent in to an intent out. And this automatically sets a new variable, uh, 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 asserts a new number. And I never have to care about this ever again. But um, this is something very few people are aware of and very few people do. So that's why, um, that's why uh, I'm, using, I'm using it like that because this is, this is what you will, uh, encounter far more often. But yes, every file handle should be different from all other file handles that are currently open. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you also want to have this this close, which is very simple. So that be, basically means I don't I no longer want to write this. There are also um, during this close, you can also tell it to delete the file again, which if you want to, um, things like that. But uh, yeah, you, you, you usually want to properly close your files to make sure that all the data has been written before the program ends. Um, I just noticed that it's already two o'clock. Uh, let's um, come back next week when we talk about the module that I've written. And uh, we talk a little bit more about the difference between subroutines and functions. And um, we will also talk about these compiler flags and compiler directives uh, and preprocessor directives. So um, thank you for coming. And uh, yes, if there are any questions, please ask them now. Okay. Anything in the chat? Just a quick question about the make file. Can you tell us more about how to create a make file? Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so the make file would the make file would be its own its whole own, uh, own system. Um, 
I have created this because in this in this um, in this prime, I'm using. I always have to also compile this this module file that we're going to talk about next week, um, and so instead of always having to type this again and again, I've created this make file. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much in detail. You can see here that to create the, the, the executable prime, it will need these two files already existing. Um, to create these files, it has, so it, it has a rule here to create this out of these. Down here, it has a rule how to create any file with the extension .o from, any, from, this, from a file of the same name with the extension capital F90. Um, and this is how to do that. Um, it then tells me that before I can make prime.o, which would be used here, and at first also ha it has to make this, this one first. And I also have this phony target clean to make, to clean everything up again. And so I could, for example, change here if I wanted to, I could make this. Um, now I, I use uh, G Fortran, no longer Intel Fortran compilers, stuff like that. Um, and uh, <sighs> no, the thing is, sorry, make files are, uh, it, it would take its own uh, a complete hour just to get the basics of, of how a make file <laughs> works. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, thank you a lot. Yeah, no worry, yeah. Okay, then um, thank you for, very much for coming. Um, by the way, uh, I, in case I, I should probably plug it this a little bit, the editor that I'm using that you've been seeing the whole time is uh, VS Code. And it's really useful because I can run it on my computer here at home while, it, while working. So the source code is on the remote system on Gadi. Um, and Claire will give um, an, in, an introduction on VS Code and how to use VS Code with NCI uh, in two weeks. So next week, we will um, conclude the brief Fortran introduction. And the week after, Claire will talk about VS Code. So thank you, everyone, for coming. And I hope I see you again next week.